students in this class we are going to see anticoagulants so what are anticoagulants they prevent the clot from forming or an existing clot from enlarging but it does not break already existing clot so that is the definition of anticoagulants and this anticoagulants should be classified into two types one is in vitro anticoagulants and another one is in vivo anticoagulants an example for the first one is heparin sodium editate sodium citrate and sodium oxalate second one is in vivo anticoagulants that would be classified into two types one is injectables another one is orals under injectables only one example that is called heparin under oral again that would be classified into two types one is kumarin derivatives another one is indian dione derivatives under kumarin derivatives examples are warfarin bis hydroxy kumarin under indian dione derivatives examples are anisin dione phenyl dione and diphena dione heparin is a naturally occurring substance that is present in mast cell it is present in lungs and liver it is also obtained from animals like pigs and dogs and it is composed of heterogeneous mixture of sulfated monopolysaccharides and it has two alternating sugar units they are n acetal d glucosamine and d glucuronic acid it accelerates the binding of antithrombin 3 to thrombus and serine protease necessary for normal blood coagulation next one is protamin sulfate it is used to reverse the effects of heparin it is specifically used in heparin overdose in low molecular weight heparin overdose and to reverse the effects of heparin during delivery and heart surgery it is given by injection into the vein the common side effects are low blood pressure slow heart rate allergic reactions and vomiting now we'll see the mechanism of protamin sulfate it is a highly cationic peptide it binds to either heparin or low molecular weight heparin so what it is first it is a high cationic peptide so it binds to either simple heparin or low molecular weight heparin to form a stable ion pair which is not having anticoagulant activity this complex is then removed and broken down by reticulo endothelial system in large doses this protamin sulfate may have an independent and weak anticoagulant activity now we'll see the uses of protamin sulfate it is administered to reverse the large dose of heparin administered during sudden surgeries especially heart surgery where anticoagulation is necessary to prevent the clot formation within the cardiopulmonary bypass pump apparatus it is also used in gene transfer protein purification and in tissue cultures as a cross linker for viral transduction in gene therapy this is studied as a means to increase the transduction rate by both viral and non viral mediated delivery mechanism next drug is dicumarol this is otherwise called as bis hydroxy cumarin this is the structure of dicumarol so what is it it is having one benzene ring that is connected with six member ring having oxygen as the hetero atom so totally this can be called as cumarin so benzene with this six member ring having oxygen with double bond o at second position and uh, double bond between third and fourth position also that is called as cumarin so here we have one cumarin here we have one cumarin and what is the numbering starts from oxygen so 1 2 3 4 so fourth position it is having hydroxy group so it is a four hydroxy cumarin this end also it is having four hydroxy cumarin and third position of these two no that two are connected by means of methylene bridge so 3 3 dash methylene so what is the chemical name 3 3 dash methylene bis same groups no so bis four hydroxy cumarin so that is the chemical name now we'll see the synthesis of dicumarol so first we have taken methyl ester of acetyl salicylic acid so already we have known acetyl salicylic acid that is called as aspirin so what is it benzene ring here we have cooh here o co ch3 so that is called as acetyl salicylic acid here we have a methyl ester means that is called methyl ester of acetyl salicylic acid 
that on reaction with the sodium at 205 degree centigrade what happens there may be fusion I mean there may be cyclization on cyclization what happens here we have OCO no the same OCO here and here we have CH2 from the CH2 already it is having three hydrogens no one hydrogen combines with OCH3 and removed as CH3OH and one more hydrogen is combined with O to form OH and this carbon has to connect with this carbon so between that there may be CH so we are getting that here we are adding sodium salt no that is why we are getting sodium salt of 4 hydroxycumarin now on treatment with HCl what happens this Na combines with Cl and removed as HCl and here we have OH we are getting 4 hydroxycumarin now we are taking 2 molecules of 4 hydroxycumarin that one on reaction with the formaldehyde what happens here this corner is having hydrogen no so one hydrogen from here one more 4 hydroxycumarin from that we are taking one hydrogen from this position so two hydrogens and that one combined with oxygen and removed as water that is why that two 4 hydroxycumarins are connected by means of this CH2 so we are getting dicumarol so that is the synthesis of dicumarol Now we will see the mechanism of action of cumarin derivatives. So this coagulation of blood no that depends upon the cyclic interconversion of vitamin K and the vitamin K23 epoxide. So what is vitamin K? It is a cofactor that is necessary for the post ribosomal synthesis of several clotting factors examples clotting factor 2, 7, 9 and 10. So this vitamin K is in uh, K sensitive step in this process involves the carboxylation of glutamic acid residues to form a new acid that is called as gamma carboxy glutamic acid. So we are getting this acid gamma carboxy glutamic acid and here this vitamin K no that can be called as quinone by means of the enzyme vitamin K 2 3 quinone reductase it would be reduced and we are getting vitamin K reduced to form otherwise that is called KH2 or hydroquinone then this one by taking up that um, carboxylation of glutamic acid residues what we are getting we are getting vitamin K oxidized to form that is called vitamin K 2 3 epoxide. So, epoxide and also gamma carboxy glutamic acid residues. Then from vitamin K, um, vitamin K 2, 3 epoxide reductase, this 2, 3 epoxide no that would be converted into quinone that is vitamin K. So, this is a cyclic step, cyclic process. So, what are the enzymes here involved? One is vitamin K 2, 3 quinone reductase. So, quinone reductase means that one converts vitamin K quinone into the reduced form. Here another enzyme that is called as vitamin K23 epoxide reductase. So what is the use of that enzyme? That one converts vitamin K23 epoxide into vitamin K that is called as quinone. So this is the general mechanism. So if uh, the cumarin should be taken means that cumarins will block these two, these two enzymes. So if these two enzymes are blocked what happens? Uh, this conversion no vitamin K reduced form would not be obtained. So we are not getting that glutamic acid residues that is why it is acting as an anticoagulant because for the coagulation which would be very very important that is vitamin K is very important for the coagulation. So if that two enzymes would be blocked so the vitamin K synthesis should be blocked so that is why it is acting as an anticoagulant and what are the uses of um, that Kumarin derivative? used alone or an adjunct to heparin in the prophylaxis and treatment of intravascular clotting and it is used in post operative thrombophilibitis, pulmonary embolism, acute embolic and thrombotic occlusion of peripheral arteries. Next drug is warfarin, it is also a Kumarin derivative, so according to Kumarin this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 hydroxy cumarin. In third portion, what is attached? This thing it is attached. So, this is called as phenyl. With the phenyl, CH2 is added, means that is called benzyl. And this uh, CH3, CO, CH3 that is called acetone, that is why it is called. And this carbon is called alpha carbon. 
So, th every, this would be attached to the third position of coumarin. That is why 3 open bracket. This carbon is alpha. So, alpha this is acetone. So, acetonyl this is benzyl close bracket 4 hydroxy coumarin. So, that is the chemical name. It forms water soluble derivatives in alkali. It has two isomers S isomer and R isomer. This S isomer is 5 to 8 times more active than R isomer. It is a synthetic anticoagulant and used as a rodenticide. The next drug is called anisin dione. So, look at the structure of anisin dione. So, what is that benzene ring that is connected with the cyclopentane and that is having two ketones and with that again one benzene ring is attached that is connected with OCH3. So, look at that structure this is cyclopentyl is attached with benzene. So, the fusion of these two know that can be called as indane and that is having two ketones already we have known if it is having ketone that should end with one having two ketones so dione so that is why totally it can be called indane dione. So, 1, 3. 1, 3 portions we have first and third portion we have that ketone that is why it is called 1, 3 indane dione. Second portion of indane dione is attached with paramethoxyphenyl that is why its chemical name is 2 paramethoxyphenyl close bracket 1, 3 indane dione. So, that is the structure of anisin dione. What it is? It is an indane dione derivative and a orally active anticoagulant. That is all about anticoagulants.